Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll take a look at Docker Compose, which allows us to define multi container applications. It's also useful for a single container, as it provides a simple way to document how they should be run. You could put a Docker run command into a script and check it into version control, but a Docker Compose file feels neater to me. In this example, we're using Oracle REST Data Services and Oracle Database 19C images, which we built on Oracle Linux 8 in some previous videos. If you go to my GitHub, you can see I've got a Docker files repository. If we drill into that and then into Compose, we've got an Oracle Linux 8 19C ORDS Compose. So in there, there's a readme that just points to an article, but let's look at the compose file itself. So we've got docker compose yaml, um, it's a yaml file. There's some comments at the start, but let's just jump into the service definitions. This docker compose actually defines three services. First is the ORDS service. If the image isn't present, then it has to be built and the build section describes how to do that. Notice it's pointing to the location of the Docker file. In this case, the ORDS service is dependent on a database service, and that's described in this depends on section. And then we have the image this container is going to be based on, which is the Oracle Linux 8 ORDS image we built in a previous video. We can define any volumes for persistent storage. In this case, I'm mounting a host volume into the container, which is going to hold our data files and persistent config. We can, then define we can define any environment variables that are going to be necessary for the startup. We could do this as an environment file reference, which would probably make more sense, but I just wanted to show you some environment variables being set. We have the port mappings and the Docker network that's going to be used for any container to container communication. We also have a restart policy saying that this should be restarted unless we've actually stopped it manually. We then get onto the database service, similar format again, with the build information pointing to the Docker file, the image we're going to use, we have persistent volume, which is using a host volume mapped into the container and then the passwords. Once again, port mappings, and this is joining the same Docker network as the ORDS container because they need to speak to each other and a restart policy. This compose file is used for some demos that I do when I'm doing presentations. So I include a third service called Portainer. Portainer is an image that allows you to fire up a container, giving you web-based interaction with Docker. It's quite nice when you're doing demos to give people some visualization apart from using the command line. I wouldn't normally expect this to be part of a stack like this. At the end of the file, we have any Docker volumes that are necessary. In this case, there's just the Portainer data one, which we're using for the Portainer container. Remember, we're using host volumes for the database and ORDS, so we don't need a Docker volume for them. Then there's a definition of the Docker network that we're going to use for any container to container communication. Notice I've just left defaults for the volume and the network. I've not added any additional parameters. So that's really it. This is just the definition of how to run these three containers as a single stack. Let's see an example of using this. We're in the correct directory and we issue the docker compose up command. The minus D flag just says run this as a daemon or a background process so that I get control back of my session. We can see the containers are created very quickly, but we want to look at the startup sequence within the containers. So we can use the docker compose logs command. The follow option is similar to doing tail minus F. We can see the ORDS container is checked for the database and it's not there yet, so it's going to sleep for 30 seconds. The Portainer container is starting and the database startup is beginning. The database is now started and we've just got to wait for ORDS to kick in again and check to see if the database is up and then complete the ORDS configuration. 
the auth container has polled the database again and it's there now so the auth configuration can start. The warnings are because we've got default values for some of the connection pool settings and they're quite small for a production database. And that's all started so we can switch across to a browser and check to see if Apex is available. To stop the stack we use docker compose stop. The database container takes a little longer than the others to stop. The minus T option allows us to extend the timeout, making sure we get a graceful shutdown of the database. Without this, it'll default to 10 seconds, and then Docker will kill the container. We can remove the stack using the Docker Compose RM command. Minus V means remove any Docker volumes. This won't remove the contents of the host directories. Minus S means stop any running containers, and minus F is force, so we won't get a confirmation. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.